When my daughter Joy was four years of age, she had an accident on a zip line. Zip line went through the air and she went head first into a tree. Knocked herself out cold, blood everywhere. Amy was beside herself. I took her to the emergency room. They put her on the operating table and she'd come to. But they told me what we need you to do is we need you to hold her down. So I'm looking at my little girl. Daddy, no, daddy, no, daddy, no, daddy, no. I never will forget it. And she wrestled with me and she didn't let go around my neck. I knew as her father that this is what needed to happen. She did not understand. And so she wrestled, but she didn't let go. What do you do when what you see with your eyes is different than what you believe in your heart and you find yourself in the valley? What do you do when you're crying out to God, believing that he'll hear your prayer, he'll move in a way that brings relief or brings blessing or brings, brings provision, and yet God doesn't. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, though I'm still praying and I'm not seeing an answer, though we lost something so valuable to us and we do not understand, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. There are dozens of reasons why I might not want to rejoice. This isn't a half-hearted, partial declaration of God. This is a faith that worships when everything is not right. This is a cry from the depths of our heart, believing in the goodness of God in the middle of pain. What happens? You may be very low right now. I'm convinced sometimes God may even allow us to get low where we have nowhere else to look but up. You're hurting, you're desperate, you feel alone, you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, you feel broken. What do you do? You remember the goodness of God. You embrace Him. You may wrestle. I understand.